Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the troubleshooting of the ignition source for an oil fired boiler or furnace. So, this right here, you have your T and T terminals. This is typically connected to your thermostat, and if your thermostat's calling for heat, it will connect and then bring the wire back over to this other T. So, this is 24 volts, and you're connecting it right over to there. So, we have it jumped out calling for heat right now. These two wires, the FF, those are connected to the CAD cell, and we'll go over that in just a little bit. Right here, this is an electronic ignition. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So you know I have the power off right now. And anytime you work with oil, you wanna make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves. So you wanna make sure that you don't get the fuel oil on your hands and get absorbed through your skin. So this is what the inside of the transformer looks like or the uh, electronic igniter. And once again, I do not have the power on right now, it is off and this is the CAD cell. So this CAD cell is uh, looking for light. So right now it has a very low resistance value that's bringing over to the uh, oil primary control uh, but in order for this to spark right now with this open we would actually have to disconnect one of these two wires right here. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have that disconnected. The next thing, we want to take off the wheel primary control. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. And what you have here is somewhat of a jumbled mess, but uh, basically you have power coming in to the wheel primary control. So this is 120 volts coming in. This is your common coming back out. This orange wire is actually powering this valve, allowing oil to flow through. It's, it's also powering your motor right here, which controls your pump right here, and also your airflow for combustion. And the third wire, which is the blue wire right here, is going to your electronic ignition source right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect the, the pump meaning the motor and also the wheel solenoid and I'm just going to connect our electronic igniter in. So you could have one that's that's like this, an electronic igniter, or you can have an ignition transformer like this. So these are about 10,000 volts right here. So this is a little bit bigger, but you're going to test them the same way. You don't want to use a multimeter in order to test for a 10,000 volts uh, because basically that's you're going to hurt your multimeter, it's going to break it. Uh, this particular multimeter is rated for higher than what normal ones are. Normal ones are rated right around uh, 600 volts. This one is 1,000 volts. Uh, but once again, you do not use a multimeter to test this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an alligator uh, jumper on one spring, and I'm going to check the spark gap. Now, that's a rather wide spark gap, so uh, I want to bring it in a little bit closer, but I also want to be further than about an eighth of an inch. So right about there is good. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power on. You wanna make sure that your CAD cell wire is disconnected. On your oil primary control, it wants to read um, very high resistance value or basically no resistance value at all, like it's disconnected in order to start. Um, so you could either do this and disconnect one of the two wires going to your CAD cell or you could put some black electrical tape over the face of the CAD cell, once again with the power off and make sure that none of these are touching anything when we when we turn this on. We also want to make sure that we have our reset pressed in. And here we go. So that's a rather wide spark gap, so that's further than uh, 5 30 seconds or an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. You don't want to have that running too too long because you don't want to wear out the, the spring right there or also your alligator clip. Uh, so you just want to test your gap. So, so you see that your transformer itself is strong enough. Power's off right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect this. The next thing that you want to do is if you cannot see in the front of this, uh, once again with the motor off and the solenoid not powered, if you cannot see in the front to actually check the spark gap with these two actually touching the two rods right here, these two rods, then what you're going to need to do is we're going to have to disconnect right here and pull this assembly out. And uh, I can show you a quick test on that just with these out to, in order to check your gap. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The other way that you can do it is actually just pulling the entire assembly out, uh, out of the furnace or out of the boiler, and then checking in the front right there to see if you are getting the uh, correct ignition and if it's happening in the right spot. So we're going to need a rag. adjustable wrench pair of channel locks and we're going to remove this one nut here on the side you want to watch for any spilling oil that's why we have a rag there that's also why we're wearing our nitrile gloves. So here's your nut that I just took off. And be real careful not to sp try to spill much oil coming out of here. So this whole tube is filled with oil right here. Uh, in order to, to drain that, we're gonna replace this nozzle. So typically when you have this out, you're replacing the nozzle anyway, so uh, they're cheap enough. So that's what I'll do. See, with this nozzle out, what happened was it allowed for all the oil to just drain right out. Okay, so that is empty right now. So I just wanted to go ahead and check this spark gap right here. To take that out, you could use two wrenches, or you could remove these right here and uh, use a socket set in order to take this off. But you can't use a socket set uh, by itself because these uh, electrodes are in the way. This is an oil gauge right here. And if you can see, the center of the three lines is lined up with the center of the nozzle. And then this line right here is lined up with the electrodes. You see this depth right here? That's also lined up. Okay, the probes are lined up to the end. So these probes are not extending past, they're not before, so this is the uh, correct depth. And as well, if you see the how close the uh, igniters are to each other, they're just a little bit outside of these two lines right here, but we just saw a spark gap that was much wider than that. Okay, And I just wanted to show you this trick. I have this flipped upside down right now. And I'm just going to come in right here and right here. I have it on an angle uh, just because uh, my camera, I don't want it to arc on the camera. <laughs> this rod right here and this rod, you need to pay special attention to it. Make sure that they are not anywhere uh, as close to maybe a half an inch away from any type of uh, metal anywhere else. So you want to make sure that that is safe. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and turn this on. So if you can see that right there. We are sparking, and uh, that is going to ignite the oil if the oil is sprayed out in a good pattern. Now the power's off. Another thing that could be the problem is the ceramic right here could be cracked, and the metal right here could be arcing onto this metal. Uh, that's something else that could be happening. So you just want to make sure that, uh, that you have a good uh, distance right here for your spark gap. So we know that our spark is not the problem. So that's how you uh, diagnose the spark. If, if these rods need to be adjusted, then you would loosen this, this bolt right here and then you would twist these and move these in place. Okay. If Typically you don't want to try to bend these, but if you need to, you would need two um, basically a pair of channel locks and, and one here and another one right here in order to bend these. Uh, but that's only if these get really overheated. Because uh, you definitely do not want to apply pressure onto this ceramic right here and crack it because that would that would not work. Right? That would not be a good thing. So that's so, how you do it. I'm going to put this back together now. I'm going to make sure that we connect our uh, motor and valve back up to our power output out of the oil primary control. Make sure that once you put this wire nut back on, you test each wire individually. 
make sure that they do not pull out of the wire nut. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put everything back. So the reason I disconnected the motor and also the solenoid uh, was just to make sure that I didn't pour oil into the heat exchanger while I was testing the electrodes uh, and the spark gap. That's why I did that and I also don't test the oil transformer with a screwdriver just because I don't want to be near the voltage when it's on. Uh, so that's why I end up using the alligator clip. So I turn the power off, alligator clip the spring, and turn the power back on once my hands are clear. And if you're looking for any of the tools or supplies using this video, I have them all linked down in the description below. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. We're rewarding the members there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.